Hi, this is the Daiwu Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering Case Study presented for BA 652A by Wendy Gerben and Michelle Eaton. First, we have a summary of our findings from reading the case study. Um, for background information, DSME is a top production site for shipbuilding and offshore construction located in the Straits of Korea. It is currently ranked third in the world um, for shipbuilding, or as current as the case study presented, um, with a vision of becoming the global leader in shipbuilding. Um, we're going to look uh, through the course of this presentation at the history of the company and then determine what the question of the case study is and the, the problem that we're trying to solve and make recommendations for. And then we, um, and in order to do that, we uh, decided to take the case study and turn it into a SWOT analysis based on um, the information that was available to us and some additional research to determine the best recommend recommendations for our question. So I will be going through the history of the company and then also the, um, the SWOT analysis and we'll turn it over to Michelle to talk about our recommendations and um, future goals and actions for the company. Um, so here's a history and overview of Daewoo DSME. It's a Korean shipbuilding company, as we said, found in 1973, and it built its first chemical carrier in 1979. As you can see here, it's a kind of overview of some of the, um, the innovative practices that they had and also um, some relevant points in history with the company. Um, it has been able to... Um, achieve a lot of, during its career and including most recently um, posting a revenue of 10 billion US dollars um, for four years straight 2008 through 2012. Daiwu um, DSME has a history of creative solutions to shipbuilding and um, some of that includes the locations that they build ships and some of it is working and partnering with other um, other industry partners as well as um, as well as non-industry partners to to create um, new types of ships as you can see here they've built several they were um, at the innovative side of building several types of ships and as part of their history they've also survived the Asian financial crisis in 2005 which um, has led to various other implications later on in the financial status of their company, but um, were able to survive that at a time where other industries in, in Asia, including banks, were, um, were failing. So the problem statement that we came up with out of the case study is this. Should DSME diversify its business to ease the impact of the cyclical nature of the shipbuilding industry? Um, particularly, should it look at becoming involved in producing other products, even products in relation to the, to the industry. But, um, so we're going to talk about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we found in the case, um, the case study so that we can help identify a solution to this problem and, and give some recommendations. In addition to being able to give recommendations, we'd like to also look at the question of what steps should be taken to address this issue. Um, so not only recommendations, but maybe long-term and short-term recommendations for the company. So here we have the strengths of DSME. As stated before, it's the third largest shipbuilder in the world, and um, it is leading its the industry in vessel size and technology, which we'll talk about a little more at, as we go throughout the slides. It has a great geography and climate for shipbuilding. Um, it's located in the Straits of Korea. It has access to the Sea of Japan, the East China Sea. Um, lots of automated shops to help its operations. Um, they've been good at creative solutions, including um, creating offshore solutions to space limitations, um, quality of workforce, it's got a known history of delivering high quality product and really tailoring its work to the needs of the customers. 
And then as another strength, um, there's a lot of proprietary knowledge and technology within this company, um, which is not being used by other ship builders, um, particularly many of their global competitors. As you can see in the quarter, quarter they do have a, a strong customer service and quality um, belief that they practice, which um, they want to earn the trust of the com com customer, that they have a lot of pride in what they do, that they want to tailor things specifically to the needs of the customers. Um, one area of that was reading in the case study how they think about how the crew on the ships will live and interact with the ships that they build and so they try to tailor the design to the needs of the people who will be working on the ships, not just the, the client who is having the ship commissioned. As far as weaknesses, as we said, um, there's limited space available for physical development of the shipbuilding operation and so that, that is something that has to be considered. Also, um, they're dependent upon less competitive and com competent upstream and downstream vendors, including working a lot with Chinese shipbuilders um, and having to outsource some of their work. The profit in the shipbuilding industry is unpredictable. As I mentioned, in 2005, there was a large crash in Asia and financial market. But in addition to that, there have been um, varying demands for um, the shipbuilding industry. And we'll see that later on in a slide that Michelle will share. Um, one other weakness is an aging workforce. There's a very, very competent workforce, but the average age in 2003 was 39 of the workers where for the workers, whereas in other um, other companies it was 32, and so they are always um, have the potential to l have retirements and lose the valuable knowledge of working with the product as they have the re these retirements. Um, they implemented the ERP system, and it had. Um, it had some difficulties, and so th just as a company, knowing how to implement um, data collection and work with your employees and understanding how to, how to do processes, and, and that seems to have been a weakness at a point for them, and it's, they have learned from it, but understanding the dif difficulties they had implementing new procedures as a, as a company. And then finally, more than half of the company equity is controlled by government-run companies. So um, that was part of the financial crisis. Uh, an outcome of that is that many shares are divided amongst these government-run companies. And so if, um, if there were to be uh, a strategic investor or another buyer could take a large share and potentially change the direction of the company, and that's something that DSME is pretty susceptible to at this point. Um, even post case analysis, there's been a lot of literature pointing to that as an issue. Um, opportunities for the company include LNG and container ships promising to have strong growth as, um, as far as sales. So we'll see some slides with Michelle in a few moments about uh, what that looks like, the projections. Um, but those are value-added vessels, and uh, DSME has been innovative in the past, has a history of innovation with building new kinds of ships, and some of the first types of LNG ships were built with them, and so it's a definite opportunity. Understanding and taking advantage of the, the cyclical nature of the industry and, and being able to focus in on what your niche market is. Um, some of the other things are um, China is um, has been a competitor, and again, they are currently building less skill. They are less skilled in building lower quality ships. Um, in some reading, we found that China is getting more orders in terms of gross tonnage, but as of July 2013, um, South Korea had in that year South Korea had 76.2 percent more than China in the dollar value, and so they're they're doing better even though they're building maybe less quantity, better quality, selling at a higher volume for a higher rate. Um, opportunity to globalize and partner throughout the world. Um, as you can see in the map in the corner, we have subsidiaries, overseas branches, and affiliates with DSME. And then um, the chance to diversify beyond just shipbuilding but into shipyard construction as an opportunity. 
and then increasing production into different shipbuilding markets such as the defense market. Um, so those are several opportunities that are available. We discovered through the case study and analysis um, of current literature. Threats that are related to DSME through this case study include, again, China, um, Chinese shipbuilders building ships at a lower cost. So if Chinese um, shipbuilders could learn some of this pri proprietary technology that DSME is, is careful um, and can, wants to protect, they could start building better ships if that information was leaked. Um, also, there was, again, the threat of the stock being sold and becoming a new, uh, new major shareholder taking over the company, possibly moving in a different direction. Um, there's also the fact that um, Korean shipbuilders were spending less on R&D than um, other manufacturing industries in Korea. That In 2003, Korean manufacturing industry spent 1.83% of their sales revenues on R&D. And we're going to um, look at that a little more throughout the slide, but um, that's slightly over the standard of others in the shipbuilding industry, but again, much lower than other manufacturing industries were spending um, revenue on R&D. Um, and then there's the competitors that they have internally to Korea, um, the Korean competitors such as HHI, which is currently the number one shipbuilding um, manufacturer in the world. And they, during um, the fiscal year, 2011, DSME had anticipated a 10% increase in growth orders, which was about 11 billion U.S. dollars. But HHI, again the global leader, was anticipating a 50% increase and a um, 26 billion U.S. dollars. Again, also there's always the threat that the market is going to be um, unstable. Again, the cyclical nature uh, is an opportunity and a threat. Ship Daewoo diversify into other markets, including options relating to shipbuilding. Now we'll look at some alternatives um, and some recommendations, building off of what Wendy had said in previous. Some alternatives for Daewoo um, diversify into shipyard construction. Um, they already build ships. They've kind of perfected their space, how they use their space. Do they share that knowledge with other people or do they take it themselves and help other build, people build their shipyards. Um, perhaps they increase investment in research and development. Um, there's some very good studies that show that that could help. Um, should they continue global, a globalization strategy by investing in shipyard growth globally, um, grow their affiliates? Um, should they continue to grow and outsource the construction of ship blocks um, so that they have to do less on site and just bring that in to um, help build their ships? Um, and increasing public awareness. Um, they have put themselves out a lot with the current World Cup. Um, getting their name out there can only help. Um, increase production into different shipbuilding markets. Um, de developing the strategies that will allow them to build different types of ships. Push themselves a little bit beyond the LNGs that they've been dealing with. The recommendations that Wendy and I came up with after looking at the case study and looking at different articles and what was in the book, um, we, we kind of thought that Daewoo should increase their investment in research and development. Um, they should increase their public relations, put their name out there more. They should definitely diversify their vessel types. Um, not saying that they shouldn't do LNG, they absolutely should, but start looking at other markets. And they need to develop the workforce. Because of this aging workforce that they have, they definitely need to start looking at not just the managers, which they've done a very good job at, at bringing in talented, innovative managers, but they need to start looking at that workforce that is aging and how they're going to prepare for that, um, that switch. Investing in R&D, a, a, as, as you can tell from this graph, there's, there's a, a correlation there between the more you spend in R&D, the, the better your sales are going to be. Um, Korea is, uh, the shipbuilding industry, unfortunately, has, has not invested in research and development as much as they so, should. So Daewoo should definitely start investing more in R&D. And because they have so much proprietary technology, investing in research and development is only going to grow that proprietary technology. And as other companies learn what they know now, then they can... Um, be learning what's tomorrow, um, so that other company will always be a step behind them. 
increasing public relations, like I said, World Cup 2014, they're out there a lot more. They need to be building their brand awareness. Um, not only for the buyers of the ship, but it would be nice if they could build some kind of brand awareness, and I think they started this with the World Cup 2014, so that the end users of the products that are actually on these ships, the users of the LNG gas, the, 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 the Daewoo name is recognized by not just shipbuilders and not just people in the industry. Workforce development, as we mentioned and as Wendy mentioned, the workforce is aging. Um, there's, there's a definite trend that that age of the workforce is getting older, and as they get older, they work slower, and they you you get the you you ha run the chance of losing that that ingrained knowledge that they have from working years and years and years in these industries. Um, a, a mentoring program, perhaps, to to match up younger workers with these older workers to help retain that knowledge that comes from just working in this industry for so long. Um, and as well, they should they need to continue the system that they have currently that they use to, to find these innovative, young, dynamic managers that have taken Daewoo into this wonderful direction. Diversifying vessel types. Now, submarines and warships, warships you know, um, immediately it's, it's kind of a, but, but somebody has to build them. Um, and Daewoo right now um, is currently, um, has has already put in a new research and development facility that that is kind of working on this already. Um, the facility is is working on the development of submarines and warships, um, and it's in response to trends right now that in the global defense markets. Um, but other priorities are they're they're strengthening their domestic technologies, and um, and yeah, while well, nobody really likes to have it done, somebody's got to do it, or if somebody's going to do it, it might as well be Daewoo. Um, another thing that they're doing right now, which is, it, it is in line with the LNG, but it's a little bit different, um, it's this regasification unit that um, they have, they currently just got a contract to, to build these regasification units um, for Acceler Energy, which is the largest operation, operator of regasification units in the world. Um, and they currently just got a big contract with them, and Acceler is just on top to just take over everything with as far as LNG. So if Daewoo can can you know work with Accelerate Energy, then then it's a it's a definite move in the right direction. You can see from the financial summary here in Daewoo, Daewoo took or actually the Korean financial market took a really big dive in 2005, and you can see here that the, the profit for that year was um, 81.7 billion in Korean dollars and in and 2013 where now they've gone to one trillion twenty eight billion dollars. The long-term goals of Daewoo really should be to position the company to be the top ranked shipbuilder not just based on dollars but based on capacity and completion. Um, right now China outdoes them in gross tonnage but Korea has 76.2% more dollar value for their machines or for their ships. So while China, China is, is producing more tonnage, we're producing more value or Korea is producing more value. The long-term goal is going to be accomplished by what we have here, which is they need to increase their shipbuilding space. They've perfected their floating docks, um, their, they need to spread that affiliate reach further than they have. Um, they need to, div to, to continue with the workforce training, to do that mentoring, to replace those, not replace the working, the aging workforce, but to, to make sure that that knowledge isn't lost. Um, and, and they need to increase in research and development. And in conclusion, we've We've kind of laid it out what we think with Daewoo and, um, and, and the research that we've done and the information that was available to us. Um, and, and we feel that perhaps while they can diversify internally with, with what they're doing, rather than diversifying away from building, they need to diversify into the shipbuilding and diversify into the types of ships they're building. Um, they need to increase their research and development and they need to 
um, develop that workforce more. Thank you for listening.